Hello everyone and welcome to this virtual launch event co-hosted by Bridgestone, a global leader in sustainability and mobility and advanced, advanced solutions and new automotive innovator Lightyear. Uh, my name is Robert Llewellyn, I am CEO at Fully Charged, the world's number one clean energy and electric vehicle channel and I will be your moderator for the day. On a personal level, as someone who's been a long time advocate of electric mobility, I'm thrilled to be helping share this news today. It's really interesting. So the theme of the day is efficiency and how these two long-term partners came together to drive efficiency in light year one, the world's longest, the, the first really long range solar electric vehicle. So a quick agenda uh, to, uh, to set things off. Uh, shortly, I'll be introducing you to the two people sharing the virtual stage with me today. Uh, we'll then look at why environmental sustainability, which is core to Lightyear and Bridgestone's ambitions, is so significant in today's world. Uh, we'll then get to the nine-year partnership that unites these two businesses, and then we'll focus on the Lightyear one itself and the bespoke tires Bridgestone created for it before looking ahead to the future. And finally, we'll have some time at the end for questions from you, our audience. But before we move on, a very few uh, quick housekeeping points to be aware of. Uh, this session is being recorded. The guests will be placed on mute throughout. You can, however, use the question box to share anything you, you'd like to ask our speakers. Feel free to submit your questions throughout the session and we will get to them at the end. And for the questions that we don't have time to respond to during the session, fear not, the team behind today's event will be in touch to share responses from Emilio and Lex once uh, they've had time to work through them all. So, you know who I am. Gentlemen, would you like to introduce yourselves? Uh, let's start with Lex. Yes, um, I hope you can all hear me. Thanks a lot for joining this session. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. So, my name is Lex Sloat, CEO uh, co founder of Lightyear. Um, we started Lightyear about um, five years ago, in 2016. Before that, we did, um, um, we did some racing. So, we were in the World Solar Challenge. That's a big competition in Australia. Uh, for solar cars, basically the world championship, where you drive from Darwin to Adelaide uh, throughout the outback. Um, we, uh, um, that was an, it was a very exciting event and uh, co-sponsored by Bridgestone as well. So the challenge we had is that uh, we were the first ones to, to build a four-seater solar car back then. Um, so basically we looked at the physics and realized that it uh, was possible to build not just a one-seater solar car, but a multiple-seater. Um, but we had quite a lot of trouble finding the right tires for that. So that's uh, how the, the relationship with Bridgestone started uh, already back then in 2012. Um, so we started the company in 2016 because we realized that there's so much more potential to, to this concept than just driving races. And uh, um, it was perhaps a nice anecdote is that uh, during the competition in Australia, you, do, you drive with the solar car, of course, but a lot of uh, combustion cars as well. And um, of course, uh, it's, a, it's a bit kind of an uh, uncomfortable truth that you're also driving with combustion cars there. Um, but most of these combustion cars have to stop to tank uh, and the solar cars can keep driving. And that's a, that's a nice illustration of what electric driving can also be. Um, and they realize that it's not just sustainability, but also uh, uh, convenience that, that it can bring to people. Um, so with that in our minds, we started the company in 2016 and uh, we're uh, getting ready to deliver the first products, the first lot year once at the end of the year. That was fantastic. Thank you, Lex, so much. And, uh, and now, Emilio. Yeah, good morning, everyone, also from my side. I am Emilio Tiberio. I am the COO and the CTO of Bridgestone for the region EMEA. I'm also a global executive of Bridgestone, uh, shaping the strategy at global level. So Bridgestone is indeed a global leader, providing sustainable mobility and advanced solutions. How we do this? Well, the key word here is innovation. And um, in order to innovate, we do a lot of R&D inside the company, but more and more we connect with our site. So we connect with startups such as uh, Lightyear that we got to know and support during the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge. So it was a great journey together. Today, you will see how we have translated this partnership into really an industrial project and how we carry on going on for the future. Thank you very much. Uh, 
Yeah. So, uh, yeah, well, thank you very much, Emilio. So clearly we exist at a time of, of uh, global environmental anxiety. Uh, Emilio, what is being done to push the sustainability agenda uh, and, and, how, and how is that working? Yeah, in the sustainability, Robert is the burning platform. I mean, we can witness ourselves how, for example, the CO2 emissions are increasing every year, and now the temperature rise is creating a really catastrophic events at global scales. So it's time to act now if we want to uh, keep the um, temperature of the world within the 1.5 degree and we need to do now. So next decade for sure will be essential to shape the future of the plan. And Bridgestone is uh, extremely committed to this. Now, one of the key points here to solve the problem is to invest in innovations and technology. An electric vehicle, especially when powered by clean energy, for sure will be part of the mobility switch that we need to pursue in order to have a more sustainable world. Bridgestone, uh, as I mentioned already, is very committed to this. We have laid out our vision uh, of sustainability. So by 2050, we will be fully sustainable in terms of energy consumption, as well as in terms of material that we use in our products. And uh, in order to do so, uh, we invest in research. When it comes to electric mobility, we have done our survey and we have seen that um, a lot of people, uh, actually more than 50% uh, uh, of European drivers, have the uh, wish to move to more sustainable uh, um, mobility, such as electric vehicle. Still, there are fears remaining, for example, uh, the, this uh, range anxiety. So this is why how we can also contribute on the final product on the car, basically providing cutting edge technology tires in order to reduce um, the fuel consumption, in this case, the battery uh, consumption and um, increase uh, the range. So, and of course, Lightyear was an excellent partner in doing so. So indeed, it is. thank you, Emilio. I mean, because the light year car, I just think is a genius, uh, just such a wonderful thing to witness. And when we made an episode about it on Fully Charged, it was incredibly popular. It just people were fascinated by it. There were people who were skeptical, there were people who were sort of, you know, critical of it, but they were, there was a huge amount of interest and excitement about it. So, I mean, you know, light year is a kind of, in terms of automotive manufacturers, Lex, light year is a very, very new, a, a real newcomer to the space, but your association with Bridgestone has spanned so that the entire time you've been working in this area, you've been working with Bridgestone. Can you tell us how that began? That was presumably the solar, the solar challenge in Australia. Yes, exactly. So the, it, um, as, as most of you will know, uh, these solar cars have been um, cars for one, one person. So uh, these cars are extremely light, so 150 kilos, and then uh, add one person to that. Uh, so the tires that were developed for, for those types of vehicles were closer to basically bicycle tires than they were to car tires. Um, uh, so back then we had the challenge that we had to build a solar car in, in basically nine months. Uh, and design it from scratch. Uh, so we had no no time to to find the right partners for tires, um, and uh, uh, um, uh, and then we found Bridgestone actually had very good tires to actually suit this uh, suit our needs. And uh, so these were extremely low rolling just tires, and uh, we were happy to have just 50 of them in the World Solar Challenge, and uh, that really helped us to to win that competition that year. Um, and uh, so we started the team in 2012, so we didn't expect we, we could even have a shot at winning the, the World Solar Challenge. So we're super happy that uh, we managed in the end. And, and from that, a lot of learnings, because a lot of things, we made a lot of mistakes, et cetera. And uh, we learned a lot about how tires can really contribute to, to building a great car. Um, so uh, that's also when we started like your one development. Uh, basically, uh, car development very often starts with the tires. So um, uh, the, for, the occupants are kind of the first thing you think about, and then the second thing is our tires, um, because it's the main contact you have with the ground. Um, then, it, so it's not only for comfort and grip and a lot of other things that tires are important. It's also for efficiency, because if you if you can select the right tire, uh, you can reduce the energy consumption, and by reducing the energy consumption, you can build a car with less batteries to get to the same range. 
Uh, and if you can build a car with less batteries, then um, that means that the whole car can be lighter, the battery can be lighter again, um, and the, the powertrain can be lighter. So there's a lot of different factors that uh, are enabled by, uh, by different tires. Um, and actually designing a car for a specific tire. Uh, so it, mi it might sound strange, but it's, it's almost uh, like that. Um, and uh, um, so our Bridgestone partnership has been uh, so going for nine, uh, nine years now and uh, has really helped us to get to the stage where we are right now, where we can present the Lightyear One uh, in, its, uh, in its full form in about a month, uh, where, you, where we'll be able to show also the performance that we can get to, the efficiency, the range, the, the, the amount of solar charging you get. Um, so we're very excited to, uh, to show that. I mean, am I right in thinking that Bridgestone's, uh, the, the global CEO of Bridgestone approached you after your fourth win in Australia, having heard about your ambitions and then, but that's such a, it's such a cool thing, you know, if someone, uh, that position in a company goes, let's work with these guys who are making this new car, complete breakthrough. Yeah, exactly. And so we were there uh, during the, the, the award ceremony. And we heard that uh, that the CEO would want to talk with uh, with us, and we were well. I, I was uh, um, well, not a student anymore, but it was very close. <laughs> uh, so having that privilege was uh, was extraordinary. And my my uh, Japanese etiquettes were weren't that good, so I was a bit afraid I was doing things wrong. But in the <laughs> end, uh, it all managed, and we still have a partnership. So I think it. it uh, went you're well. you're okay. Yes. So Emilio, I would imagine that this part, you know, I mean, I'm assuming that Bridgestone has partnerships with companies all over the world and many, many different relationships. But this one has got to be fairly unique in, across your sort of portfolio of partnerships. Yeah, indeed. Uh, this is unique and uh, exciting, fantastic story. The reason why Bridgestone is sponsorships in so many years, the World Solar Challenge, is, are basically two. The first one is uh, um, to promote sustainable mobility. And this um, challenge is about that. The second is, uh, as our CEO did, right, is to get in touch with the young engineers, but I would say even more with young innovators, because they have brighter idea. They are futurists, so they know where they will push the next technology um, envelope. So this is how the cooperation uh, came to life with Lex, and we are excited that then finally this cooperation, starting in a challenge context, then move into a real partnership for an industrial project. So started back nine years ago, and today we have already our plans laid out till 2030. So still a long way to work together and innovate together. So Lex, as Lightyear, you say, you know, you always say that efficiency is at the heart of things. And I love the, the notion of starting the design of a vehicle from the tires it's not something people would normally they think oh what's the shape of it but you, i love the fact that you start with the tires but it is of course crucial for any vehicle electric or not to be built with efficiency in mind so why is it so integral to the work you're doing yeah if we take a step back and look at what what people are expecting electric cars to do in the future then uh, so basically and at any birthday party you would you would be and ask um, and people would be talking about electric cars and why they're not driving them then uh, you mostly get to the to three core arguments. So, so one is uh, they don't provide enough range. The, the second one is charging. Uh, so are there enough charging points? Can I charge my car? And the thirdly is uh, it's affordability. Uh, so those are, of course, there's plenty of people that are still, uh, that are already okay with the, the kind of range and charging convenience that, that is uh, out there today. Uh, but there's a lot of those that, that still need to be convinced. Uh, so we're very focused on those three basics, the, the three basics of building a great electric car. And uh, if you look at these three points, then uh, that means uh, basically building cars with a small battery because batteries are expensive uh, and getting from that small battery a large range. Uh, so you're getting a lot of um, uh, yeah, range from that. Um, and the only way to do that is efficiency, basically. So you can only get a lot of range out of a small battery if you have a very efficient car. Um, and then the third one is charging. Um, and the great thing that if you have built a very efficient car for the first two, then uh, you can use that efficiency to uh, implement a solar panel and then you can get enough energy from the sun every day uh, to actually uh, drive all of your distances that you use to. And uh, therefore, so basically by, by using this efficiency volume button, I would always, almost say, and really pushing that to the limit, uh, you, can, you can build uh, cars that exactly excel on, the, on those three core points. And uh, that's what we're after. And that's why, the, why a partnership uh, uh, is, is important. 
Thank you. So, and Amelia, was it, I mean, was this sort of idea of uh, that, that, that Lightyear exploring, was that reflected in Bridgestone's consumer research about people's attitude, the general public's attitudes to uh, electric vehicles? Yeah, indeed. Uh, we do early, of course, survey on the mobility and how consumers see the mobility evolving, right? So still, uh, I, I mentioned before, people are willing to move into a more sustainable mobility. However, our research says that 37% are skeptical about the efficiency and the range. So they are afraid to get stranded, especially when they move to a full electric vehicle. So this is the pain point, let me say, of the end users that we need to resolve. And I think that here Lex and his team had a great idea of having an electric car with a solar panel uh, um, boost, let me say. Yeah, because I mean, Lex, tell us, you know, how the light, the light year one overcomes those concerns. Because I mean, you know, I hear them every day. I'm absolutely aware of the, the kind of reservations people have. Yeah, so, um... For the first car, the Lightyear One, we're not focused on, uh, or we cannot really focus on cost yet, because yeah. uh, we're still building technology. It's it's um, um, it's it's the early days, so we need to bring the technology to to scale to really make it affordable. Uh, so what we're trying to do now is really um, hit a home run, so to say, on the charging and range factors. So just make sure that uh, people will never. Um, or even have the possibility to complain about it because it's just it, very similar to a combustion car and charging uh, for the Lightyear One. We hope to get to, um, and actually there's two countries or a couple of countries, uh, so Italy and Japan are good examples, uh, where you get more energy in uh, on average uh, during a year than that you need to drive all your daily distances. Um, so in those countries, it's either energy positive, and that means that you would basically almost never have to plug in, perhaps for a very long trip, um but uh but not for your daily driving and uh well and how, how extraordinary is it that you can uh with today's technology you can build a car that uh, that can charge itself um yeah. and uh, uh so that's the the what we what we're doing now with Lightyear like one and what we want to bring to mass markets as well i think i mean i think it's really worth it let's have a look at the video in this video uh, lex explains more about the light year one's groundbreaking features because it is really awesome uh, have a look at the video So let me give you a tour of the Lightyear One. It is the first long range solar car. So on the battery, so even at night, it can do 725 kilometers. And the solar panel, the five square meters you have on the roof, it brings in three quarters of the energy you need during the year. So that means that uh, you would only need to charge from the grid about once a month or when you do a long trip. Our mission is clean mobility for everyone everywhere. So that means we need to build the cleanest cars that get most of the energy directly from the sun and at the same time cars that everybody wants because they have long range and you don't have to charge anymore. So how do we do this? How do we make a car with such range that doesn't need to charge? So let me take you through a couple of steps. So step one is a very efficient powertrain. So the motors, the inverters, everything is super efficient and is directly in the wheels. So you don't have any gears anymore, no heat lost, ultra efficiency. And the second very important step is the solar panel itself. So it has five square meters of solar cells directly in the roof. So we try to catch almost every photon and turn it into electrical energy. So we can charge the battery and drive the car. And then the third important step is aerodynamics. So crucial is to have a small back surface. So it means the roof line needs to taper down, the sides need to taper as well. Um, and of course, the wheel pad ensures that all the air that goes around the car is nicely guided to the back of the car. So aerodynamics is not just about the back of the car, the front is also very important. We need to reduce the frontal area and the surface on the front of the vehicle. So we did a couple of things. So we have the motors and the wheels. So that means we have more airflow underneath the vehicle. Secondly, the tires are quite narrow. And because they're narrow, the surface is smaller and we improve the aerodynamics. So although we want to reduce the frontal area of the car, the interior space still needs to be enormous. So we need 
more than enough headroom, we need a lot of legroom, and we did that by looking at every centimeter to make sure we increased the interior space. And last but not least, we have rolling resistance. It is two factors, we need a lightweight car, but one secret ingredient are the tires. So the tires need to be very low rolling resistance. And a great thing about low rolling resistance tires is that it allows you to make the battery smaller. And if you make the battery smaller, you have a lighter car again. Uh, so it gets you into a positive feedback cycle. And for the tires, we collaborate with Bridgestone. We have a long history with them because we raced with their tires in the World Solar Challenge in Australia through the Outback, 3000 kilometers. And the tires that we had back then were extreme needle rolling resistance. And now this is also available for customers. And we're going to have these tires on the larger one as well. So efficiency will enable to build cars that have a long range on a small battery. So we can make affordable electric cars that everybody loves and it can charge directly from the sun. Oh, was I muted? I'm not sure if I was muted then. I don't, uh, uh, I'm hoping I can be heard. Can you yeah, hear you me? Can, we can hear you, you now. Can, yeah. did, you hear the, did you hear what I said before that? <laughs> I didn't. Uh, uh, okay, no, I was just, uh, all I was saying, well, I was congratulating you because I think it is a, a brilliant achievement that you've got this far. I, I, I just think it's, I would love you to go through some of the features in detail because uh, if you wouldn't mind next us, because it's so, impressive for someone who drives electric cars to hear of a you know over 700 kilometer range is, is very impressive so can you sort of go into a bit more granular detail about the car yeah of course so if you look at the different elements then um uh, there, there was a couple of challenges we had challenges we had to overcome so the, if you look at the roof and the hood uh, you see the five square meters of solar cells um the the difficult thing is that both for aesthetics as well as for aerodynamics you want to have curved surfaces so not only curved in one direction like this but also curved in the other direction uh so and you can uh you can imagine that if you take a piece of paper you try to uh, uh bend it around a bowl then it then it uh, crumbles right or it it, uh, it doesn't fold nicely and uh, those are the type of problems you'll have to uh, address if you want to build a solar panel it can curve in two surf uh, two directions um, so what we did is uh, uh, we used a very clever back sheet and, and added solar cells on top of that. Uh, we can place them very closely to each other and uh, we also have them in different groups. So you can imagine um, um, uh, compared to solar panels that you have in your house, they're stationary. So you put them in a place where there's no shade, of course. Uh, with a car, you drive around all day and uh, you, you sometimes park it uh, partly underneath the tree. So you also need technology to make sure that if, if it's parked partly, partly underneath the tree, that uh, the most of the solar panel still keeps working. Um, so we, we developed electronics for that. But of course, uh, even more important is working on the efficiency of the car. Um, if you look at uh, how normal electric cars are built, they're built with a central engine, mostly, uh, sometimes two. And, um, uh, and they have gears to, to then drive the wheels. Uh, what we saw is the opportunity to uh, get, get rid of a lot of these things that you normally have and put the uh, motors directly in the wheels. But to do so, uh, we had to develop a new type of inwheel motor because there were no inwheel motors on the market that were uh, this uh, specifically de de uh, developed for efficiency. Um, the same goes for inverters. We have to develop them ourselves as well. So there's, there's a, basically when you start working on these, uh, on a concept like this, you at some point realize that uh, there's just a lot of stuff that is just not on the market that you will have to develop yourself. Um, so that they took a bit more time than we hoped, um, and now we're uh, getting very close to to production, and um, um, I'm very excited to to bring this to customers. So it's, I mean, at the moment, then the, the the idea is that you that the cars will be commercially available from from the end of this year, from in in 2021. Yeah, exactly, and. Um, uh, and of course, this is a slow ramp up. So we're we're building, we're starting with a few cars, then getting into a real production in mid 2022, um, and uh, uh, and then make customers happy with this. Yeah.
God, I mean, it's very, it's very, very exciting. It's not long now. So, uh, Emilio, Lightyear, Lightyear One must surely be a unique vehicle to work on from Bridgestone's perspective. Now, because one of the things that uh, that uh, Lex pointed out there was that the, the tyres are quite narrow. So, on if you had, if you consider the size of that vehicle, a, a comparative size vehicle, it would probably have enormous wide tyres. So, uh, I, I'd love you to explain the difference between low rolling resistance and and still kind of grip from the point of view of safety because it it feels like if it's low rolling resistance it might be slidey which i know it isn't <laughs> and, but i'd love yeah. you to explain that because it's such a fascinating change in our per perception of tires no in, in, indeed so first of all let me say that we are really uh, thrilled and honored to be on this uh, true uh, world first uh, in the electric vehicle uh, space eh? So it's a unique car and we are glad to be part of this uh, team. We are indeed very proud of the results because finally we end our tires which is uh, all rounded. And so it's delivering the same performances that the end user is expecting from uh, driving, uh, driving behavior. Of course, we had to invest a lot in uh, technologies to do, so, uh, to do so. And we have combined a number of uh, new innovative packages that before we didn't have into one uh, unique product. So to some extent also our Bridgestone Eco tires is a world first. So, um, and here we have, first of all, two technology packages. The first one is what we call Enlighten. And this is the package that we use when we want to use to build uh, very light tires. Why very light tires? Uh, for two reasons. First of all, because they are more sustainable as we use less material. And the second is that a lighter tire means also better uh, efficiency in terms of both less uh, uh, running resistance and less weight that the, the car has to carry around. So this was the first package. The second package is about Ologic technology. So you have seen in the video that um, uh, the, the primary goal of Lex and his team was to reduce the aerodynamic drag. So he needed actually very narrow tires because this is the way you reduce the front section. So our logic is very much about this, uh, meaning very narrow tires, but at the same time, very tall tires in order to carry still the load of the car. And uh, in here, the, the way the tires is touching the ground is completely different because, I mean, conceptually, you have something which more looks like a bicycle tire rather than a passenger uh, car. So in, in this case, you need to redesign a number of elements such as the, 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 the pattern, so the geometry on the blocks, the, the way the tires is touching the ground, and especially the, the, the key element here is uh, the compound of the rubber that is touching, uh, touching the ground. So, um, how we have translated this? Finally, results is a um, low running resistance tires, which is delivering the same performance as an equivalent uh, uh, tires. If you compare now this with other tires similar in the same size, same shape for other electric vehicles, this is even more advanced thanks to the enlightened package. So in this way, we deliver better efficiency. As a result, Lex could cut 90 kilo in weight of the car, or if you want to translate this into um, efficiency range, a large, um, Lex could add 28 kilometers with one battery charge. Mm -hmm. In terms of weight that the tires carry on, we could reduce this by 10%. So this means 3.6 kilo less on the uh, car. And finally, let me say that uh, uh, all this technology is rather new. And these are technology packages that we have specifically designed for electric vehicle. And we want to communicate this to the, our um, end users. And we have adopted, starting from this car, a special marking on the sidewall. You see on the bottom of this slide is what we call Bridgestone EV marking. So, so this indicates that the tires have been specifically designed for OE application of electric vehicle. Wow, that is very cool. I, I, I want some. <laughs> I want some on my car. <laughs> but Lex, now, I mean, I know that you, you sort of tire that offered very low rolling resistance and weight reduction, and, and as Emilio explained. 
I mean, does can you see that that has really assisted Lightyear One's uh, efficiency in the long run? Yeah, and uh, perhaps also diving a bit into the, the weight reduction as well, because that's an, that's an important element. Uh, of course, anybody uh, close to, to um, or uh, that, that uh, has a lot of knowledge on the topic will say, hey, added weight to the, to the tire. So if you made a, fit a motor into the wheel, then you'll get more unsprung weight, so to say. And that um, um, uh, you, you want to mitigate that by looking at all of the different aspects you can you can do to reduce the weight of the of the, of the corner. So we looked at uh, not not just the tire, which is, is extremely helpful, but also the um, uh, how you integrate the motor with the rim, so you can use the same structure for strength uh, rather than you need a separate rim and and motor for that. Um, and uh, and of course also looking at how you integrate that nicely with the suspension, so you can make the suspension as lightweight as possible. Um, so there's a lot of different factors that, that go into um, uh, reducing kind of the corner weight, so we sit, so to say, of the of the of the tire and the, and the wheel. Um, and uh, the weight reduction of the tire has been uh, really really crucial. The um, the total weight now of the corner, uh, uh, sort of unsprung weight, is is actually just marginally higher than what you would get on on similarly uh, on similar cars in the same price range. Wow, I mean that is really impressive because you, you, I immediately assume when you say in wheel motors, you just think that's going to be this huge, heavy, extra thing that you know the unsprung weight argument. But if you've got it down to that level, that's extraordinary. I mean that, and presumably, uh, Emilio, this is very much where Bridgestone came in. Could, could you, because now you, can you explain the the fitment Bridgestone custom developed for the Lightyear one? Because that you might need to explain. I don't know what the fitment is, so I need that explaining to me. No, indeed. Uh, and um, as Alex was mentioning, once you have an um, in-wheel motor, the corner that we are usually used to in terms of vehicle dynamics is completely different. So we had to redesign uh, the tires in terms of uh, stiffness, in terms of durability. And to do so, we have implemented a number of new technologies, especially in material science. So you have a completely new uh, compound. This compound has been uh, um, new not only at the science stage, but also at the process stage in mass production plant. So is the whole value chain that has been redesigned basically for this vehicle. Then we have new carcass material and new belt material. Now, once you introduce all these uh, novelties, uh, um, the risk is that you slow down the development activities because there are too many things uh, altogether. So in order to um, speed up uh, on development time and support Lex, and Lex actually is moving as a startup, so it's very agile, we changed also our way of working and we moved more into a virtual design. So we have created digital twins of our tires and our engineer have changed the design on the digital twins version. Then through our own application in computer simulation, we could of course assess the performances of the tires, assess how the changes are impacting the performances. And only once we were satisfied with the convergence uh, then we built a physical prototype and we exchanged um, those prototypes with uh, Lightyear team. So again, new way of working that finally it's also a sustainable angle because we could save up to 40,000 kilometers of outdoor testing, just the running the tires as a computer simulation. All oh, right. So yes, yeah, I understand. Yes, you didn't need to. You didn't need to actually have them driving that right. system. Yeah. And so, I mean, what in in terms of what was the actual impact to the efficiency of the Lightyear One having low rolling resistance tires? So uh, the the impact, uh, yeah. So we can both answer the answer that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> but the uh, uh, the actual uh, the, so the impact and efficiency was uh, was uh, like mentioned here on the slides about three watt hours per kilometer, which is uh, considering that this. Uh, so the, the energy consumption of the Lightyear One is uh, about 83 watt hours per kilometer on the WLTP cycle, and um, so basically, also the lower you go with that number, the more significant these kind of improvements become, right? And um, uh, so we're, uh, 
we very carefully look at all the, the, the biggest contributors to energy consumption, uh, aerodynamics, rolling resistance, but also the factors behind that, like rolling resistance coefficients and, and weight. And, um, and we look very carefully at how all these interact. Um, and, uh, uh, by, uh, and, and this has been a very significant um, factor for Lightyear amongst all the others that we worked on. Yeah. All right. And I mean, the other thing is, uh, Emilio, that you, you have a very strong sustainability focus on the, you know, the research and development of this time, and that's a really important factor. No, indeed. As I mentioned, uh, Bridgestone is very committed to sustainability. So we are on a journey to uh, have sustainability in all our aspects. So sustainability in manufacturing, sustainability in design, in testing, and of course, uh, in the material that we use. We have a long-term objective, so to cut uh, rolling resist, uh, to cut sorry, um, uh, the CO2 emission by 2050, and uh, being carbon neutral. And also in 2050, we want to have 100% sustainable material. And we are uh, on this journey. In 2030, we project to cut 50% uh, of our CO2 emission in manufacturing. And uh, Europe is a front runner for this. And all the energy that we use already in our manufacturing plant is coming from green. So this means renewable energy. Wow. That is fantastic. Uh, uh, I'm sure everyone's going to be keen to know what's next then for this amazing groundbreaking vehicle. But uh, what can people expect from this partnership between Bridgestone and Lightyear, Lex? What, what's the next steps? Yeah, so there's uh, to, to uh, get to mass markets. That's the next step for us, of course. Um, at the, you're, we're going to reevaluate all the different decisions you make throughout the car and, and look for new uh, ways to, to really push the boundaries. And um, it really helps to develop cars in a very holistic way. So to look at all the different factors that go into making a car, not only, of course, very efficient, but also bring, uh, bringing a great user experience. So um, uh, having a good ingress and egress, et cetera. There, um, uh, a lot of luggage space. Well, there's, there's a lot of different factors to, to go into. Uh, um, and so what we do internally, we have models basically that calculate the energy consumption for every, uh, every part of the cars, including even the magnets in the, in the motor and the, the, the electronics in the inverter and uh, try to find all of the trade-offs that we can make to, uh, to, to take the next step in energy consumption. And being able to very um, tightly uh, collaborate with a partner like Bridgestone really helps to uh, build exactly the right tire for the right car. And there's, there's so many, many decisions to be made in a tire and so many decisions to be made in a car. And if you can uh, kind of marry those two, uh, that, that really helps in tire development. So, um, uh, and we do that with other components in the car as well. So if you look at uh, batteries, then you want exactly those battery cells that can provide high density. Um, so we can reduce the, the mass of the car, but also uh, that are compact, so we can increase aerodynamics. Uh, so tight partnerships with 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 those uh, companies in the supply chain is crucial for us to um, uh, to build the next generation of uh, of, of solar cars. Um, so we're we're looking forward to uh, uh, to do this with with Bridgestone in the future as well. Yeah. And, and what about Bridgestone's future plans within your industry, Emilia? I mean, I'm presuming this project with Lightyear has has given you the opportunity to e explore different areas and expand your research. I mean, what, what can you share with us today of what's coming in the future? Oh, indeed, we are very much engaged in terms of electric mobility. And in 2020, 30% of bridges and OE treatment are for uh, electric vehicles. So we are participating into a number of uh, projects. Now, of course, we will keep investing in these uh, pioneering uh, um, vehicles, such as the one of uh, uh, Lightyear, and we keep developing our technology in order to be up to the requirement that electric vehicle pose. Because actually, electric vehicle the cars are behaving a different way. That we know that they are heavier. They have an interesting torque. So you need to develop uh, um, in uh, the right technology to fulfill uh, um, the requirements. Because that's, I mean, you know, what is great is that both your businesses are driven by the idea of sustainable, you know, a sustainable future, which I, it, we are, I think we all accept is critical. Uh, I, I mean, what, what, what more can we expect to see from Bridgestone in this area in the near future? Because obviously everyone knows tires do eventually wear out and we have to replace them. So what, yeah. what, are, what are your plans in the near future? 
No, indeed, uh, we are extremely, as I mentioned before, we are extremely committed into uh, sustainability. We know that this is the, the, the next uh, social value and barrier that we need to, to address. Um, we will not do this alone. The sustainability effort is quite a, a big one. So we will do in partnership with our, of course, uh, uh, in this case, OEMs, as well as we will do with our uh, key uh, partner in the research and development. So Bridgestone is spending around about uh, 800 million in R&D activities every year. And I can tell you that the, um, a, a big part of this and more and more we see the percentage is going into a sustainability angle. And we will do this looking at all the components. So from uh, uh, starting from the raw material that we use to how we um, procure the raw material, how we use uh, um, a manufactured tires, the, the more sustainability in terms of usage and reusage of the tires. And then finally, the circle back, uh, how we can extract value from the end of life tire as back to raw material. So we are shifting the concept in terms of sustainability from supply chain to supply circle. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, well, I mean, this is, I'm just having a quick look at some of the questions. There's quite a lot, but there's one that I think is a really good one for you, Lex. It's, it, it's from Gary Powell, who says, as it's quite cloudy in northern countries, then are these vehicles therefore designed for southern countries only? And I just want to quickly add to this with something we haven't mentioned yet is the statistics tell us that most uh, motor vehicles are left stationary, not doing anything for about 90% of the time that we own them. In which case, if for say 40% of that 90%, it's light, you're going to get some energy going in the car, even if you're in northern climates. But you, you are, that's my answer. <laughs> but you, what, 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 do you, what do you say to that? Are they, are they only good if you live in southern Italy? <laughs> no, so, so uh, first and foremost, so uh, like I said, the efficiency metric uh, is, is an enabler for a lot of other things uh, apart from the solar part. So if you make an efficient car, you can drive further on the same battery, you have a lot of range. So basically, um, uh, yeah, so it's a great electric car. You can charge fast charge as well, and you can just use a normal charging point. So all those things are similar to an electric car or better. Um, then the, the, the second factor then what the solar panel provides is we see that in the Netherlands, which is arguably one of the most cloudy countries on earth. So um, it's, it's ironically not a very, not a logical place to build solar cars, but we, um, uh, you'll get about 8,000 kilometers to 10,000, really depending on, on how you use the car, uh, 10,000 kilometers of sun each year. And the average Dutch person drives about 13,000. So uh, it's actually already quite close. So uh, also for the northern countries, you can get a significant amount from the sun. Um, uh, if you look at places like the U.S., 80% uh, of people park their car outside during the day. Um, so it's a huge, huge benefit there. Um, and uh, um, yeah, that, there's, a, there's a lot of use cases that are still very... If you look into the future, solar cells will get better, battery cells will get better. Uh, so this can only get better, right? So uh, we think that if you... If you look 10 years down the line, then uh, um, range will probably not even be in topic anymore and, and charging. So it will not even be on your mind that you would have to charge your car. It's just simply filled with energy every day. That's, that's the, that's the um, situation we want to push for and want to get to uh, in, in uh, this decade. Is that, there's a, 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 another interesting question from Jan Martin de Vries. I'm saying that wrongly. I do apologize, I'm sure, Jan. But it, it, it's, uh, it, he says... Is the lifetime of the solar panels different from the life, life cycle of the rest of the vehicle? And how, if so, how do you cope with that? Yeah, very interesting question. I, um, the solar cells probably outlive the car um, uh, in terms of uh, all of the metrics, also performance. Um, the, so we did, of course, there, there have never, never really been... Uh, good solar panels for cars uh, and good good solar arrays for cars. So what we focus on a lot is making this automotive proof, so to say. So we did a lot of testing in vibration and heat and cold and 
um, but also of course testing with ball drop testing what does what happens with hail what happens if you uh, get it through the car wash uh, so there's there's loads of factors to, to be taken into account and um, uh, it will will probably outlive the car um, there's one for you, Amelia, because I mean, this is quite interesting. So uh, this is from David Shaw. He says, often electric cars have very high zero speed torque, as we know, and which is, lead, can lead to high tire, tire wear, uh, as well as a fun experience for the driver. But how is the light year one positioned and the way you've designed the tires? How does it cope with that, that potential for you know, high speed acceleration? Yeah. yeah. So if you, uh, sorry. <laughs> Let, let Emilio uh, go first. Uh, Emilio, then you can dive yeah. in. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, when compared with similar products that we have uh, on other electric vehicles, uh, this tires is even improved. And we have done this uh, through continuous research in the pattern design as well as in the new mix that we have in our compound. So we uh, now this is, uh, by, by now, is a well-known characteristic of electric vehicle. So we, we got to know how to deal with it. Alex? Yeah, now we oh, look at uh, ac ac acceleration as well, is that, uh, so we, we really want to focus on those things that, are, that customers are really looking for, and especially those customers that are not driving EV right now. And uh, since we, we hear a lot about charging and range, we, we figured that uh, if we can uh, trade a bit of that acceleration and uh, give that to charging a range so you can reduce the, the, the weight of the powertrain, weight of the battery, a lot of things. If you reduce the acceleration, um, we can give people a lot more range. And so in the end, we, we think that a lot of people will value being quicker to the destination rather than quick at the, at the traffic light. So um, yeah. we, we uh, provide eight, eight to nine seconds to 100, so the acceleration time. It's still quicker than, than a lot of uh, combustion cars, I would arguably more than 90% of the combustion cars on the road, but, uh, but it's not the kind of crazy acceleration that you would get from a Tesla Model S or, or a, a similar vehicle. So, uh, and that also helps with tire wear, of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The other key features that you have on electric vehicle or from a tire point of view is that you don't have free rolling because the tires are or in uh, traction or in braking. So this is another element, of course, that we have to take into consideration. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's true. Um, there's, some, there's a lot of interest, you'll be pleased to see, Lex, from people who want the car. So there's one from Ted Welford. Uh, he said, what markets will Lightyear One be available in? Any plans to introduce it to the UK? And then another one from uh, Sajid Ahmed, who says, uh, hello, Lex, are you planning to develop your vehicles? to satisfy the African climates as well? So the, the goal is to, to um, deliver these cars to Europe and uh, UK is also a part of that. Um, um, we, uh, for the next version, so going to the high, high volume uh, manufactured versions, we're, we're going to have a much broader scope for markets. So then we'll also include probably US and, and Asia uh, and Africa uh, as well. It's um, uh, for now, we really have to focus on, on doing a few things very well, and that is uh, within the market in Europe. That, that's, well, that's, good. that's good news, I hope so. Yeah, so is, and now, here's one uh, for, for you, Emilio. Is Bridgestone already selling tires for other electric cars or developed it, or are you in, in, involved in other partnerships with other car companies? Can we expect to see your electric car logo on other, other electric vehicles? Yeah, indeed, as I mentioned before, uh, in 2020, about 30% of uh, our OE fitment are for electric, were for electric car, and we are going to increase more and more. So starting from uh, Lightyear 1, you will see our electric logo uh, on every single OEM, OEM, OE tires that we have specifically designed for electric um, vehicle. So to highlight that there is a special technology packages. What is the uh, word first here in the specific LTR project is the fact that we are combining two technology packages that in the past we, we kept separate. So is the Enlighten and Ologic. So in this sense, uh, LTR is really unique. Uh, uh, thank you, there's so many questions coming. I'm just trying to find a, another, uh, uh, let me see. Uh, sorry. Uh, oh, uh, the, uh, here we go. Is a price one, Lex, for you? 
from Knut Moberg, Moberg uh, 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 and the entry price to start with, question mark. <laughs> yeah, so the, the exclusive series, uh, the first uh, sort of electric one that we're bringing to market uh, is priced in a very exclusive market. So, um, uh, so we're, we're not in the, in the business of, of uh, billing exclusive cars for, for, the, for the coming decade, but we have to start there because a lot of the technology is still expensive to develop. And um, uh, so we're bringing this to customers that will, uh, will help us to learn a lot and also help us to increase economies of scale. So that these, these first customers are, going to, are really going to help us to get to the next steps of getting, getting solar cars to scale. So the, the price tag is 150,000 euros and it's excluding taxes. Um, and uh, a lot of the people that, are, that, are, that signed up for a car and a lot of people that did the prepayments um, come from the Netherlands at the moment and we're, we're uh, expanding to the rest of Europe in the coming year. Because I mean, I think the thing is, I'm presuming that in the long run, if you can get reach a point where you can scale up and start mass producing cars, and you could also maybe design slightly smaller ones, or you know, the, the technology strikes me as being highly adaptable. That you, you you could have you know two wheel drive smaller cars with smaller batteries, but solar panels. Yeah, I mean, is, do you think the, the the concept is is adaptable in that way? Yeah, definitely. And so it's not necessarily, you don't have to have exactly the form factor that we present right now. You can make it smaller, you, the roof line can change, etc. It's all about making just very clever decisions throughout the whole design of the car to, to focus on efficiency. A lot of the, the brands in the, in the, in the market um, don't really take efficiency into account for every part of the car. Um, and that's what that kind of mindset is needed to, to get to this level of efficiency. And um, uh, applying that, that mindset and knowledge to, to a new version uh, can definitely lead to very different results. So um, uh, uh, also cars that, um, um, yeah, that, are, that, are, that even get closer to SUV size. Right, oh, right, yes, that, yes, that's, a, I mean, they, they, I can imagine there, there could very well be a market in countries like Australia, Africa, you know, where it is very sunny, that if you're parking your utility vehicle outside in Australia, it's going to charge pretty fast. I think you can, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that is going to be the case. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I think we, 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 should, we need to start winding up now. I mean, I just want to thank everyone for attending this virtual launch. We really appreciate the time you've taken out of your day to, to, to be with us. Uh, thanks to those who've submitted questions. And, and finally, a really big thank you to our two speakers, Lex and Emilio. Thank you very much, guys. And please keep an eye out for more Bridgestone and Lightyear news as they continue this impressive journey together. It's really exciting to even have been involved in this. And I can't wait to have another ride in a, in a Lightyear. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Robert. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thank you Robert.